wife from Atlanta, Georgia. Beautiful, wonderfully made by God. Welcome to the nation. Hello, hello, hello to all my uniques out there. This is your favorite girl, Akudo. Welcome to another video. From the title, How Big is Too Big? We are talking about wedding and we are talking about marriage, okay? To all my returning subscribers, hello, welcome back. For those of you that are not part of my family, what are you waiting for? You share all the videos, you might as well come join us. You see the red button under there that says subscribe? Click on that button. Wait for the notification bell. Click on that one too. So you will be the first to see my videos once they drop. Now, let's jump right into it. There is this guy. I love to listen to this man of God, this pastor, Dr. Abel, I think, Damina. I, I hope I got his name right. Dr. Abel Damina. And there is this video I came across where he was talking about wedding. We put so much emphasis on wedding. Oh, I want a glamorous wedding. Oh, my wedding must cost five million. Oh, I want a destination wedding. Oh, if you have the money, my sister, kudos to you. If you have the money, my brother, kudos to you. But I want us to talk. Grab a chair, grab your popcorn, grab something. How big is too big? Is it even biblical for us to spend all this money, all right? So before we go any further, I want you to hear what Abel himself said. Dr. Abel Damina said himself. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you guys will see what he said himself. Um, let's do this. Let's do this. Where is this video? Okay, let's look at this video. Let me share. I hope you guys are, are seeing the video. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it in parts because this is supposed to be a teaching video. You know, so I'm going to do it in parts. Let's start, first of all, start from the beginning. What he said about marriage. Okay, let's listen. Wedding is just a celebration after marriage. The real marriage has happened before wedding. Because the real marriage is parents giving their children to one another. That's my Let's stop right there. The real marriage, he said, is when a, the parents give their child to each other. The family of the girl give their daughter to the, uh, to the husband's family and the husband's family accompany the husband to go get their wife. That is the real marriage. That's what he's saying. That is marriage. All this other thing we are talking about, white wedding, you know, church wedding, court wedding, this Sharia wedding, all those weddings, those are after. The real marriage, you had him. Let's, let, let me let you hear him again. Okay, I want you to hear him again. Wedding is just a celebration after marriage the real marriage has happened before wedding because the real marriage is parents giving their children to one another that's marriage it's cultural it's so all that wedding is unnecessary mm -hmm. it's not in the bible no wedding in the bible white wedding is a white man's culture it's not in the bible it's not a bible thing in the Bible, marriage is parents handing over their children when requirements of the families are met. Once that once requirements, let me let me come back here so you guys can see me. Once requirements have been made, once the requirement for me, I'm an African woman. So in my culture, Nigerian to be precise, I'm from Nigeria. Okay. In our culture, you pay the dowry. There are certain things you buy for the men, for the father. And the men there are certain things you do for the mother and for the women there are certain things you do for the youth this is cultural this is as long as that has happened in my country in where i come from marriage has happened and from what dr abel is saying that is marriage so wedding is not necessary if you don't want to do a white wedding i did a church wedding i did a court wedding too but if don't put too much pressure or too most emphasis. I've seen my sister, some of you unique, he write me, oh, I want my wedding to be this big. I want my wedding to be glamorous, but he's not accepting it. If, he, if he's not going to do it, I'm calling off this marriage. How can you call off a marriage because you didn't get a 6.5 million wedding? How can you call off your love? You said you love him, 
He loves you. And you're going to put a stop to that so-called love because you didn't get the wedding gown, $10,000 wedding gown that you want. My sister, come on now. My brother, come on now. Let us be real. When I saw this video, I said, no, I must bring this video so that we can all see this video. Okay? Let's continue. Okay, let's continue. Let me go back here so we can continue. Okay, listen. That happens. Marriage has happened. And of course, because you're a responsible Christian, you now call your pastor to speak a blessing. Basic. You don't need to feed people. You don't need to wear gown. You can wear house cloth and come and get married. <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm very serious. You don't need to gather people. You can do your wedding, call your friends. 10-10. Cook for them. They eat. You rejoice. And that's it. Sunday, you come and give testimony. We got married within the week. Guys, did you hear that? I love that. You see, he's trying to say that you don't have to call 5 million people. You don't have to call the whole village. You don't have to call your whole subdivision. You can call a few friends if that's what you can afford and that's what you want to do. All this other glamour and things, you know, that we put towards wedding is maybe personal opinion, personal desires, personal, personal and wants not needs personal wants things maybe you want you want it to be all this you want to book this that vacation this destination that it's okay but it is a want it's not a need it is not that if you don't have a big wedding then that means you didn't get married how big is too big sometimes i have seen so many of my sisters the young girls i talk to especially my sisters because you know they always say that the wedding the wedding day is a girl's day so she plans everything then you see things like brazilla bridezilla you see some women that they go crazy during their wedding they want you to spend this they want oh my god there are some shows that go after those those kind of things where you see ladies that are losing it because they're getting married i want this they are mean they are talking down to everybody my sister take a chill pill it's not that serious from what dr bell is saying he says it's not even biblical the only wedding I would say that was a wedding in the Bible was the one where Jesus turned water into wine. And I don't think the whole world was there. There was no record of them wearing a wedding gown. There was no record of them. The, all these other things we do are wants, not needs. My sister, my brother, when that man comes into your life, when that rib of your rib, flesh of your flesh come into your life, when you are getting married, Marriage is when your families have agreed and the requirements that are needed have been done. Some families, some cultures, you have to go ask the, the, the bride's father that you, are, you want to marry the daughter. Some cultures, you know, you don't even pay no bride price. Maybe it's a certain thing you do and that's it. There are so many cultures. As long as the parents have been informed, the parents agree, you guys are, you have done the necessary things required according to Dr. Ebel Damina marriage has taken place if you go back and watch my videos i always tell my sisters we are so focused on these weddings and destination weddings and spending money on this wedding and doing this other one and doing the other one that we spend all this money on these weddings because we want big how big is too big sis how big is too big my brother then we do all these big weddings we do all these things we think that is necessary then at the end i have seen couples after the wedding they are homeless they were evicted from their house because they couldn't pay their rent i have seen couples that their cars were repossessed after the wedding because they spent all the money they had doing that dream wedding only to come back and there's no money to feed there's no money to do any other thing. I've seen people withdraw their investments, their, their portfolios, their 401ks, whatever, their IRAs, whatever, just to go plan this big wedding because they think that that is the only way that people will know, hey, I have arrived. You remember one of my sisters, I told you guys, I don't know whether you remember, that told me that among all her friends, everybody got married, she's the only one left. So now she's getting married and she wants to do the wedding of the century where all her friends will feel like oh my god he who laughs last laughs best come on now what is that for why do you need to do all that so you're gonna waste all this money just to let your friends see that even though i'm getting married the last but i'm going to have the most glamorous wedding 
Wedding is not it, my sister. If you have the money to do it, do it. If you don't want to, if you don't have the money to do it, don't go bother yourself, try to keep yourself miserable, depress yourself for it. But actually, even if you have the money, ask yourself, is it really worth it? Having all that big thing and doing all that, spending money that you don't have. Remember what I always tell you guys, you borrow money you don't have to buy the things you don't need, to impress the people that don't care. All right, let's get back to that. Let's get back to Dr. Abel. Let's continue what he said. Papa was there to bless us. And if Papa was not there, Pastor Praise was there. All my district pastor was sent by the church. They blessed us. It was a wonderful wedding. We were just 15 in number. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Did you hear what he said? He said, they were just, you can call anybody to bless you. Your pastor was there. You don't need to fly people from somewhere else just for your wedding. Everybody is, oh, your wedding is the talk of the town. Oh, your, this has made, let me tell you something. My sisters, come closer. I'm going to give you guys a secret, just a little secret, okay? Come closer. Those of you, come closer, come closer. Come on. Okay, my sisters, come on. I'm going to end this so I can get back to you guys. Let me stop this. Now, come closer to me. Come on, come on. Let me tell you guys a secret. Most of my, most, you will not believe this, but I'm going to tell you guys this thing. 78% of my audience, unique audience, can you believe they are male? I have only 22% women that are in my unique family. 78%, if you go to my analytics, 78% of them are men. So let me give you the secret, the things that we talk about at the back collar. Let me give it to you guys. Men don't care about those big elaborate weddings that we women are so concerned about. When a man sees you, he likes you, he approaches you, he finds out who you are. If you guys match, he proposes to you and he wants to marry you and he wants to move on with his life. We, the women, are the ones that put this pressure of, I want it to be glamorous, I want it to be sophisticated, I want it to be bougie, I want it. It's us. We are the ones. And let me tell you guys, because of the reason, the way we talk and the way we say things we want in our weddings, we have drove so many men away from us. So many men have been driven away from us because they look at you and they say, oh, oh. The kind of wedding she wants, I can't afford. So you know what? Let me gently move away. Some of us have lost the rib of our ribs. Some of us have lost the flesh of our flesh. Some of us have lost the bone of our bones because we are so busy looking at... I remember there was one brother, I, 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 one of my brothers, one of my unique brothers. He was planning to marry this girl and he proposed to the girl and he told the girl, you know what? We're going to get married. And they were trying to... This man said, they, no, 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 I don't think he proposed. He said, they started talking about, yes, they, he hasn't proposed, but they were talking about, you know, that kind of relationship where you've gotten to the stage where you guys are not talking about marriage, how many children we will have, what part of town we will live. So, you know, it's getting real serious, okay? So, he said one of those days they were talking and he said, okay, what kind of wedding would you want to have? And the sister said, oh, my God, the kind of wedding I want, there's this wedding that, hold on, let me show you. The girl went and brought a catalog on, on her phone, showed him the wedding gown. The wedding gown was $10,000. <clears> the wedding gown was $10,000. And he said, he looked at the girl and said, you're going to spend $10,000 on just your wedding gown? Oh, the girl said, no, that's my day. That's my day. I've waited for this day. So the guy said, okay. This guy told me, my brother, my unique brother, if you're watching this video, you know yourself. He told me, he said, he said, okay, maybe... It's a phase. It will pass. Every single day, the girl will bring dresses for the maid of honor. The next day, she said the kind of ring she wants. She brought a, almost a $15,000 ring for her wedding ring. Then she brought about, she, she came up uh, with uh, a, the picture of the shoe and the bag she wants to carry on that day. I think it was either, is it a bucking bag? I don't know what you people call it. And then, then she said, hey, the guy said every single day. Remember, he hasn't proposed. They just talked about what kind of wedding. In case I propose, what kind of wedding? This guy said every single day my sister had something. He went and found a hall. Oh, I like this hall. The hall, just the hall for the wedding was going to cost them, I think, $25,000. 
And the guy said, really? The guy said he started doing some mental mathematics, you know, started adding. Wedding gown, 10,000. Wedding ring, 15,000. Hall, 25,000. Only those three things already, $50,000. I'm not going to be able to afford this wedding. So he said, he talked to the girl about it and said, you know what, why don't we make it like a smaller wedding? Why don't we make it like just intimate to among friends, maybe 100, 200 guys, you know, just it's me and you, we are in love, we're getting married. For, I don't have money to do all that. You know what I do? I work for Verizon. You know what I do? I'm one of the managers on one of the, you know, Verizon offices, but I'm not a millionaire. I can't afford all this. Oh, the guy said, don't worry. You know, I found out, Sometimes you can open a credit card, they will give you a credit limit, and then you put whatever you have down payment, and then we'll be paying every month. And the guy said, oh, we're going to get married. Then after the wedding is over, then we will keep paying for the wedding just to please your friends. And the guy said, oh, I cannot compromise in that area. I have dreamt of my wedding all my life, so I cannot compromise in that area. And the guy said, oh, okay. The guy told me, my brother told me, you know, one of my uniques, he said, you know what, my, my unique mama, I, what I did was I knew this wasn't going to work. So gradually, I, I started taking a step back. If I used to see her like, let's say, five days a week, I started reducing it to three days a week. And then every time she calls, she wants us to go somewhere. I'll tell her I'm working, I'm busy. I started doing overtime at work so that that way I don't have to do. Gradually, she started saying, it looks like you're withdrawing. It looks like you're, you're you know, moving away from me. What's going on? Like, you know what? I just want to take a step back. I want to re recalculate my life. I want to rethink my things. I want, you know, and before you know it, you know, men, they know how to frustrate you. When he did that, after some time, the girl got tired and said, what's going on? Are you cheating on me? Are you this? And finally, he said, that's how they broke up. And as I sat down there listening to my brother, I was like, look at this girl. You just lost a beautiful relationship. You just lost a man you said you love. You just lost, maybe he's the rib of your rib, maybe the bone of your bone, maybe the flesh of your flesh. But you lost him because you wanted a wedding that is out of this world. A wedding, forgetting that marriage is when the two families have received their requirements. He has proposed to you. You guys have been blessed in front of a court, in front of a judge or in front of a, your pastor or whatever. That's it. Now you want to add all the shenanigans and put so much pressure. My sisters, I want you to think, how big is too big? Don't use the size of your wedding to scare your future husband away. Don't use what you want in your wedding to scare the rib of your rib away. How big is too big? I just saw that video, Dr. Abel. I listened to him a lot. He is a wise man of God anointed too. So I listened to him a lot. And when I saw that video, I said, let me put my two cents and bring it to my unique, especially my unique sisters. How big that man, that my unique brother will not tell you the reason why he's running away is because of the things you say about your wedding. That brother will not tell you the reason why he's running away is because of where you say you want to have your wedding. That brother will not tell you that the reason why he's running away is because he cannot afford your wedding. That brother will not tell you the reason why he's running away from you is that your wedding is too big. Sister, how big is too big? How big is too big? When do you say, okay, I think this size is enough? Remember, people remember before in my country, they say you cut your coat according to your size. But later they change it and say, no, cut your coat according to your cloth. Because if your size is six foot size and then your cloth can only sew for four foot what are you gonna do so you cut it based on what the size of the material you have my sister let us turn it down a little bit if you want to have a beautiful wedding weddings are beautiful i had a white wedding i also had a cut wedding white wedding is a girl's day you're so excited you're so happy you're like oh my god it's fairy tale but at the same time my sister let us also think remember what i tell you guys you love with your heart and then you think with your head because when you're loving with your head you can't think with your heart so you, you you are you're losing love that man with your heart accept that man with your heart but at the same time think with your head be reasonable and look for something 
that is comfortable for you and him. Don't go running your mouth all the time. As you're running your mouth, saying what you want, listen to and watch body language. If you notice his body language, he's saying, oh, oh, that might be a little bit too communication. Communicate. Talk to him, tell him, this wedding, how much do you think? I don't, I want a wedding. I want to call friends and family to come and celebrate our love, our union. But what is our budget? Let's talk about it. And then remember, it always takes two to tango. Let us reason together because iron will always sharpen it iron, all right? I love, love, love you guys. Remember, you are beautifully and wonderfully made by God. That is why you are unique. Be kind to yourself and to each other. Bye-bye.